In 2022, a major grid disturbance in Odessa, Texas, revealed critical challenges with inverter-based resources. On a hot June day in 2022 in Odessa, Texas, something barely noticeable went wrong. A small device, no larger than a toolbox, failed inside a power plant. It was the kind of fault that happens on the grid from time to time, usually contained and forgotten. But what followed was not ordinary. Within seconds, thousands of megawatts vanished. The heartbeat of the grid slipped, and silence pressed against the edge of disaster. Most people never felt it. Yet inside that moment, the future of our energy was quietly exposed. A fault that wasn't ordinary. The Odessa fault began like many others. A breaker should have opened, isolating the failure. Backup power should have stepped in, filling the gap. That is how the grid is designed to protect itself with layers of defense. But this time, the chain of reactions did not stop at one plant. Instead, it spread across the state like an echo. From a single 300 megawatt short circuit, more than 2,500 megawatts disappeared. Solar farms scattered hundreds of miles apart all faltered together. It was as if one voice cracked and a whole chorus fell silent. The grid, usually steady, trembled. The frequency dropped to 59.7 hertz, just above the threshold where operators would be forced to cut power to homes and businesses. Another failure at that moment could have pushed Texas into rolling blackouts. The public felt nothing unusual. Air conditioners still hummed, lights still burned. Yet engineers stared at screens, watching numbers dip dangerously low, and understood what almost happened. The smallest failure had become a warning. The grid was entering a new and uncertain era. The silent expansion of solar and wind. Across Texas, wide fields of panels catch the sun. Towers with blades taller than buildings wait for the wind. These landscapes have grown quietly, year after year, until they now provide a large share of the state's electricity. What once seemed like an experiment has become a backbone. At noon on that June day, solar alone carried nearly one-sixth of the grid's demand. Sometimes, in the brightest hours, it has climbed even higher, close to a third. The numbers keep rising, not only in Texas, but across the world. Renewable power is no longer on the edges. It sits at the center. But the grid was never built with these resources in mind. Its foundations belong to a time of spinning turbines and steady fuel. Solar and wind, with their changing rhythms and their digital hearts, move differently. They need inverters to speak the language of alternating current, to match the old system's beat. The Odessa event revealed what happens when this translation slips. A single disruption in one place echoed across the whole. Growth brings strength, but it also brings new fragility. From DC to AC, the inversion dilemma. Solar panels do not make alternating current. They produce direct current, a steady flow in one direction. Batteries do the same. Even many wind turbines end up sending out direct current after their own conversion. Yet the grid does not breathe in DC. It runs on AC, its voltage and current swinging back and forth in rhythm. That rhythm is more than convenient. It allows transformers to step voltages up or down, sending power across long distances and delivering it safely into homes. Without AC, the vast web of transmission would be impossible. So the two worlds must meet. Inverters take the smooth direct current from renewables and chop it into pulses. With careful timing, those pulses are shaped into something that resembles a sine wave, close enough to blend with the grid. 
Early inverters were crude mechanical devices, noisy and inefficient. Modern ones are digital, fast, and clever. Yet perfection is still an illusion. Small mismatches remain, and when thousands of inverters are linked together, even slight flaws can ripple into something much larger. Following the grid's pulse, for an inverter to send power onto the grid, it must first listen. The grid has a rhythm, a steady beat of voltage rising and falling 60 times each second. Inverters match this beat using a small circuit called a phase-locked loop. It senses the signal on the grid and aligns the switching inside the inverter to follow it. This makes the device a follower, not a leader. It cannot set the pace. It can only imitate the song already playing. That works well as long as the grid is healthy. But when the grid stumbles, the inverter stumbles too. This is why most home solar systems go dark during outages, even under a bright sun. Without the grid's heartbeat to follow, the inverters fall silent. The energy is there, but it has no path. The Odessa disturbance showed what happens when many inverters spread across a vast region all respond at once to the same flicker. A single tremor can send them into retreat leaving the grid even more vulnerable than before, chasing the sun's shifting point. A solar panel does not give the same power at all times. Its output shifts with the heat of the air, the angle of the sun, and the passing of clouds. Even a thin veil of shade can change the balance. The relationship between voltage and current is curved, not straight. Somewhere on that curve lies a peak, the point where the panel delivers the most power it can. Finding that point is a moving target. As conditions change, the maximum slides. If the system does not adjust, energy is wasted. That is why large solar farms rely on maximum power point trackers. These devices watch the panel's output, nudging resistance up or down, always searching for the crest of the curve. Sometimes, each group of panels has its own tracker, because no two panels perform the same. By following the shifting peak, the system squeezes out more from the same sunlight. But the constant hunt for efficiency adds another layer of complexity, another piece of machinery that must work in harmony with the grid's larger song. Frequency, the grid's fragile heartbeat. The grid lives by a rhythm. 60 cycles each second, steady and constant, like a heartbeat. When supply and demand are equal, the rhythm holds. But when they drift apart, the beat wavers. If a large generator suddenly fails, demand outweighs supply. The frequency slips downward, and with it comes danger. Motors heat up, machines lose sync, and protections begin to trip. If the slide goes too far, operators have no choice but to cut customers off to save the system. Two numbers matter most. The lowest point the frequency reaches and how fast it falls. A slower decline gives time to respond, to bring reserves online and steady the grid. For decades, the great turbines of coal, gas, and nuclear plants acted as guardians. Their massive spinning rotors carried momentum, resisting sudden change. That inertia gave the grid strength. But inverters hold no mass, no flywheel, to keep them steady. When a generation is lost, they cannot slow the fall. As more renewables take the stage, the heartbeat of the grid grows more fragile, and the margin for rescue becomes thinner. Synthetic inertia and hidden costs. When traditional turbines spin, their sheer weight steadies the grid. Inverters lack that mass, but engineers have taught them to mimic it. By sensing a drop in frequency and pushing out extra power, they create what is called synthetic inertia. It reacts faster than any spinning machine, but it does not come freely. To deliver more in a crisis, 
energy must be held back in reserve. A solar farm running at its peak cannot give more. To be ready, it must operate below its maximum. This choice carries a cost. Every unused megawatt means lost revenue, so markets pay plants to keep reserves or to pair solar and wind with batteries. Still, not all operators welcome the sacrifice. Stability demands restraint, but profit often pulls the other way. Then there is the question of faults. Disturbances ripple through the grid daily. Storms, surges, tripped lines. Inverters are designed to protect themselves, disconnecting if the danger looks too sharp. But if they retreat too quickly, the grid is left even weaker. Ride-through rules try to hold them steady during smaller jolts, asking them to endure until balance returns. The Odessa event showed what happens when that balance is off. Protection and resilience are in constant tension, and the grid's future depends on learning how to hold both at once. The growing pains of a new grid. What happened in Odessa was not the collapse of a system, but the exposure of its growing pains. A grid built on turbines and steam is now learning to share space with panels and batteries. This change is vast, and the path is uneven. Inverter-based resources cannot yet do all that the old machines once gave us. They do not carry the weight of spinning inertia. They do not light the grid back up after darkness, and they do not always endure the jolts of sudden faults. These gaps can make the system seem fragile. Yet fragility is not failure. It is the mark of a system still in transition. Engineers and scientists are working to close those gaps, rewriting codes, designing protections, and creating tools to guide renewables into maturity. One of the most promising is the rise of grid-forming inverters. Unlike their predecessors, which only follow the grid's signal, these devices can set the rhythm themselves. They can create voltage and frequency, even in isolation and lead the way through blackouts. Odessa was a warning, but also a glimpse of possibility. The future grid may not only survive disturbances, it may bend, adapt, and heal faster than ever before. The Odessa fault passed quietly, yet its shadow still lingers. It showed how a single spark can test the strength of an entire system. The grid is changing, and with it, comes uncertainty. But weakness revealed is also a chance to grow stronger. Engineers, operators, and innovators are reshaping the foundations of power, learning from each stumble. One day, the silence of that June afternoon may be remembered not as a warning, but as a turning point. A moment when fragility pushed us toward resilience and the future of energy began to steady its pulse.